Hey, how you doing? We are in the Gospel of John, chapter 19. Today is 17 through 27, and this is a description of the crucifixion of Jesus. Starting in verse, well, kind of 16. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Here they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that, he, but that this man claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. <clears throat> when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, his disciple took her into his home. So, this is the crucifixion account. Jesus is crucified. He's put on the cross. Um, crucifixion was a fairly common thing in that day. As you can see, Jesus doesn't even get his own personal crucifixion. There's two other people there with him, so there's three people being crucified at the same time. Uh, that's how common this was. Uh, a couple of thieves get crucified with Jesus. Um, and Pilate, again, you know, in the Gospel of John, it really brings out where Pilate's at. You know, he, he as a jab, writes the king of the Jews in three different languages. He doesn't write, you know, imposter king of the Jews. He writes the king of the Jews. Uh, and, you know, it really shows Jesus uh, made a huge impact on Pilate. So that's <clears throat> really an interesting thing. Then uh, we see this reference here uh, in verse 24. They're talking about that undergarment of Jesus, the one-piece garment, a, a fancy piece of clothing. Uh, this happened that Scripture might be fulfilled, which said, They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. This is a reference to Psalm 22. And I think if you read Psalm 22, you will really see a significant, uh, very, very important messianic prophetic psalm talking about Jesus back hundreds of years before. And there's really some amazing things in Psalm 22. So I encourage you very much to read that on your own. It had a huge impact on me. And then we see Jesus here worried about his mom. You know, what what's going to happen to Mary if Jesus is gone? And so he says to John, you know, hey, take care of my mom. And John uh, records the charge given to him and, you know, here. So obviously it was important to him. And it, uh, I, I find that to be a touching moment where Jesus is still thinking of others. He's on the cross. You know, I mean, he's, he's crucified. He's there being tortured to death and he's still thinking about other people. He, he thinks, oh, what's going to happen to my mom? You know, what's going to happen to Mary? And so he charges John to take care of her. And, you know, at this stage in reading through the Gospel of John, as we pray, I just want to pray a prayer of honoring Jesus for what he did. You know, it's, uh, that's just where it's at. 
Jesus has done something for us because he cares. He cared about his mom. He cares about us. He's, let's just honor him in prayer. So join with me. Lord Jesus, we honor you. We worship you. We, we're in awe of who you are, what you've done, that you would redeem the world in this way and that you would submit to that, that you would value others to this extent, that you would, in the midst of such pain and suffering and all, all the craziness, that you would still be thinking of others. And so, Lord, we honor you. We worship you. We thank you for your goodness. And we remember your sacrifice. And we pledge ourselves to you to walk with you, to learn your ways, to know you, and to share with others who you are and your goodness and your love. So, Lord, we just honor you and we worship you. Amen.